And you cannot imagine, on Friday, I went to Watches and Wonders. You were there too, right? And so I go at Watches and Wonders. I arrive. I was super tired because I came back from London. I slept like three and a half uh, hours. And then I went to Geneva with the car. I arrive at Watches and Wonders. I come in and I meet the first guy. It was Mike Margolis. It's a watch distributor and agent in the US. Then there was uh, uh, RJ Brewer of uh, Fratello Watches. Then I meet another client all at once. I make a little tour. And I was at Watches and Wonders for Mont Blanc to check out the watch novelties and also to meet a client uh, which you know started his journey into pen collecting. He purchased five truly awesome writing instruments. And okay, I arrive in, in Geneva. I enjoy my time at Watches and Wonders, which is at Palexpo, which is the place where the fair is happening, like 15 minutes from the center. And then at 12, like this customer changing times, he um, he's called changing times on Instagram. He calls me and says, hey, I'm in front of IWC. Let's meet up here. Uh, and I say, okay, perfect. I'm coming. And I'll meet him here. And I see him for the first time after chatting long time on WhatsApp. I, I, I have to tell the whole story because it's such a vibe. You need to understand this, okay? And so we say, should we eat something here at Watches and Wonders? And he's like, yeah, but I have a meeting in the center at like 2 p.m. It was 12. Let's go to Four Seasons. I have my driver. So we go out of the Palexpo. We drop in his, we go into his Maybach and the driver, the driver brings at Four Seasons. We go to the concierge. He organizes a table for at the bar. And then I don't know, we, we, we kind of, maybe I told him something like, oh, you know, like that, that Beaver is exhibiting up here. And he's like, oh yeah, he invited me to go up there to eat his cheese because he produces his own cheese with his own cows he doesn't sell them he only it's only for for like his customers and he's like he invited me at 12 30 to eat some cheese and have a, and have a glass of wine let's go up there and i was like yeah amazing let's go up there i'm a, i love jean-claude biver he's such a huge inspiration for me uh, I had the chance to already, he probably doesn't remember, but I ha had the chance already to meet him and speak with him uh, twice. Uh, uh, we even exchanged emails for something specific that I asked him. Always super, super, super kind personality. I was very happy to go up there and have the chance to meet him again and shake his hand. Okay, we arrive up there with changing times. We enter. And yeah, beside the fact that Jean-Claude Biver was there, Pierre Biver, which is his son, Super nice guy also. I didn't have the time to talk a bit longer with him, but very sympathetic guy. Uh, I, I don't know how old he is, but I think he's, he's young. I mean, definitely younger than me. Uh, looks very talented, so totally comes after, after his father. And, and, crazy thing, we are there at Biver with Jean-Claude Biver, with Pierre Biver. By the way, I'm Samuel of the future. In case you don't know who Jean-Claude Biver is, you have to understand that Jean-Claude Biver, he built Blancpain and then sold it to Swatch. Then he was hired by Omega and there he set up the collaboration with James Bond. He made sure that Cindy Crawford joined the brand. And I mean, he, he made Omega a big, big brand. After that, he bought Hublot and made Hublot the brand that we know today. Then he sold Hublot to LVMH, to the Louis Vuitton group. He became the head of the watch division with Tag Heuer, with Zenit, with Hublot, of LVMH, and then he retired, and now, since two years, he launched his own brand together with his son, called Beaver. So, we're talking about an absolute legend of the watch industry at the same level of Nicolas Yek, just to make a name. And Nico Leonard of Pride and Pinion is there, and Roman Scharf of Luxury Bazaar is there, which is cool, because I mean, Nico Leonard's super famous, I like what he does. Uh, I knew Roman Scharf also because he, I was watching some of his content. It always inspires me a lot because I am trying to storytell writing instrument in a similar way like they do. So they're probably, I, I'm more broader because I'm one of the very few ones doing it in writing instruments. But I mean, the way how they do it, it's always very inspiring and I try to take out as much as possible in order to, um, to, to, to have my inspiration. Okay, so we are there, crazy stuff. We talk about so many things. They talk, most of it, Jean-Claude Biver talks more than anyone else because he has a lot of things to say. It was super interesting and one of a kind to be there. Uh, already the chance of going up there and then meeting all these people, super cool. 
But then what happens is I was talking with, with someone and then changing times caused me like, Naldi, Naldi. And I was like busy talking like, Naldi, come here. Is this not an emperor, an Amiki emperor? And I'm, and I'm like, what are you talking I, I think I said that. I'm like, what are you talking about? Or, or I thought that. But I said something like that. And I go over there and I see that Jean-Claude Biver is signing his books published by Aurel Fusli, which is a publishing house here in Switzerland, with a wonderful Namiki court carriage in Vestiria. It's a beautiful Maki A writing instrument. Also, you know, let, let me mention the prize, about seven, six, seven thousand Swiss francs writing instrument. And why is that crazy? How many planets have to align in order for it to happen that from the Pal Expo, we go to the Four Season, casually at the right time, because it wasn't planned to go up there. We go up there, there is Nico Leonard, there is Roman Scharf, there is Jean-Claude Biver. I'm with a new customer with changing times who just is starting in two pens. I mean, the first five pens are truly incredible that he purchased. He purchased even a, a black mycin and a white mycin, so beautiful pieces. And then I see for, it's one of the first time that I see such an important personality pulling out such an important and niche writing instrument in an environment which is not my environment or someone that I know is, is truly a collector. So. Obviously, I don't know if he's, he, he is a collector. Surely is a man of great taste and a man that understands great manufacturing and beauty and art. No doubt about that. So I'm not sure if he was gifted with it, if he went and purchased it by himself. Probably it's not the, the only writing instrument that he has. But the amazing thing was that this Namiki Kurt Carriage in Visteria was filled with a black ink. He was writing with it. Probably it was even the Namiki black ink that comes in the box of that Maquille writing instrument. And he was signing with it. And then there's another thing that happens. He was signing all our books. He even signed a book for me, which I'm very proud about. You know, I have it now at home, there. It's, it's, part, of my, it's part of my collection. And then he was like signing Roman Sharfs of Luxury Bazaar's book. And they kind of say, oh, we're, we're really, we're, we're making history of watchmaking. And then I say to Mr. Biver, no, Mr. Biver, with this, with such a writing instrument, you're actually writing the history. And he looks down and, he'll, and looks up again and said, wait, say that again? You're writing the history, I told him. And then he goes and starts writing, writing the history of, what, of passion for watchmaking for Roman Scharf. And I mean, you're seeing the video right now while I talk. It was just an incredible moment. I mean, it's just incredible that finally it's really happening. Like all these important personalities, five years ago, I would have just dreamed about it. And now I see that inspiring personalities, important personalities that shaped a whole industry do understand the power of a nice writing instrument. And this makes me so proud because it's everything I've been working for. And I mean, it's just insane. But wait, the story is not finished here. You have to listen to this. I mean, it's been a crazy, crazy day. So we go up at the restaurant for the evening. We were with Mark of Swiss Watch Gang. We were with uh, Changing Times, which is, is my customers, the three of us, beautiful view over, over Geneva. And I mean, you know, Izumi at Four Seasons, quite a nice restaurant. Uh, so we, we did order quite a few things. And at the end of the restaurant, there was Mr. Biver. But, I mean, we were, he was on one end with, with, people, uh, with people of him and we were at our table. And usually you, you have the table at Izumi until like 9.30 because they have to occupy it for a second time, which is crazy for the amounts that, you, that you're actually paying. And we arrived towards the end of the evening and I thought that now the, the waiter is coming and kind of asked, can I bring you the bill? Because I heard, uh, the waiter going next to changing times and telling him something about the bill. <laughs> and then changing times just says, wow, guys, you cannot imagine what the waiter just told me. And I was like, what, what happened? I was like, 
Mr. Beaver was so generous to pay for our dinner. And I mean, I was just like, whoa, wait. <laughs> I did have the honor of having Mr. Beaver paying for our dinner totally randomly, just for a, a obviously, he, Mr. Beaver knows uh, changing times, uh, and therefore, you know, they, they do have a relationship. But I mean, it was so generous, so unexpected, so classy, so inspiring again. And for me, it was just, just incredible. So, incredible day. Incredible watch day, incredible pen day, and for me, one of the most incredible stories I have personally lived. Maybe for what also Mr. Beaver represents for me on my entrepreneurial journey. I even told him that when I shake his hand. Obviously, uh, we, we were very grateful to him for, for his very kind gesture. But guys, what should we say? Together, we are really changing the game. Oh, 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 oh,